Welcome back, everyone, to another Diacon dissectional production hosted by Deathstroke9. There's actually been quite a few requests for this song, which is interesting, but, you know, we're, we're going to be reacting to it. Um, and but uh, Yeah, I'm going to explain in a minute, but we're going to be doing Oasis Wonderwall. Okay, so first of all, let's, let's just get one thing completely straight. I'm going to be doing a lyrical dissection because... Okay, so just clear that up right off the bat. Um, but yeah, I've actually, here's the thing. I know how to play this song and I can like remember the first like, what it, like today is gonna be the day, na 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 na, you know, there's that. Um, but other than that, I don't really know anything that he sang in this song and I've probably only heard the song once. So, or not once, but a couple, not very many times. So to start, I'm going to say, hey, I have heard at least part, probably all of this song before. I just don't really remember it. Um, I know it's catchy, and I know that it's like a cliche for guitarists to play this song. So, yeah, but people were requesting it, and I thought, all right, I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure Oasis is not a one-hit wonder. So I want this to hopefully be like an entry point for maybe for me to react to something I haven't heard by them. So let me know. What else should I react to? Um, when I looked up this song, another one that came up in the list was called Champagne Supernova, and I thought that was interesting because it had, like, a very large number of views, but it was like a seven or eight minute long song, so who knows? All right. But anyway, today we're going to be reacting to Wonderwall. Uh, I'm sure most people watching this already know this song, uh, but I, th I think it's time someone took a deep look at the lyrics. I'll bet many people have done this before, but here we go. Um... And there's a video. I did, I've never seen this video either, so cool. All right, let's go. Three, two, one, Oasis. One, eh, maybe they'll block. Let's see that happen. <laughs> Three, two, one, let's go. That clown with the big shoes. Ooh. Such a great and like distinctive chord structure. Today is gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you. By now you should have somehow realized what you gotta do. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. Backbeat, the word is on the street that the fire in your heart is out. Oh, I like the strings. I don't remember there being strings. I'm in this sure song. you've heard it all before, but you never really had a doubt. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. And all the roads we have to walk are winding. And all the lights that lead us there. off um very strange video we've got swinging saws and evil looking clowns with even eviler looking clown puppets and i don't know what's going on in this video um and the lyrics are pretty weird too like if that you have every every couple of lines sounds like a straightforward or almost cliche love song but then the rest of the lines that he's saying sound very i don't know they sound more esoteric than that i don't know if i'm using that eh. That's what they, they sound different. So, as I said, I'm excited to check out the lyrics. Um, I love the... There, there's more to this song than I remember there being, probably because I only, like, play it on the guitar, so I've forgotten that there's, like, strings and all this cool stuff going on. So that's pretty, that's pretty neat. Um, but anyway, thank you for joining me. Let's keep going. Because maybe... What does that mean? 
That is a wonder. Today was gonna be the day, but they'll never throw it back to you. By now, you should have somehow realized what you're not to do. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. Last time I'm pausing it. Sorry, it sounds like it's going into a break. I just want to mention that um, there, there's two lines in this song that I've heard so far that feel very deeply, they're vague enough to be very deeply, like, I don't know, relatable? Or you're listening to that and you're like, yeah, the, there's so many things I'd like to say to you, but I, but I can't, or whatever. And the, the line where he says... Um, <laughs> Maybe you're going to be the one who saves me. Searching for someone to save you. Even though in the end, no one will ever know everything, or have all the, the thoughts that you have. And while you're living a life with a million other people, it's still you're still very, very, very much alone. No matter how well another person knows you, it seems like they... No one ever truly, completely, utterly knows another person because everyone's very unique. And as you get older, you get more and more and more uniqueness to you. And there are universal experiences that everyone can relate to, but they all add up in different ways, you know, and come out with different numbers, different complex numbers that we can't, that don't add up together. So... That's something that I think everyone can kind of relate to, which might be one of the reasons the song is very popular. All right, I'm going to shut up. Let's keep going. Oh, you're my Relatively straightforward. Video and song. Of course, I am joking. Okay, um, so let's, uh, first of all, let's uh, let's go down and see what the comments are. I miss Oasis. That one guy with a guitar at the house party. Yeah, it's a cliche for guitarists to know this song. I want this to be the end credits to the universe. Okay. We're sorry for the inconvenience, all right? My parents asked me to quit singing the song. 
I said maybe. <laughs> the national song of people learning how to play guitar. Wow. Recommendations. Green Day Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Which one is that? I think I might know that one, too. That's interesting. All right. Uh, oh, this person writes, deep song for me. My best friend passed at 44 years old. I knew him since 10. We, uh, a neighborhood friend as children. Ultimately, cancer took him just a few months after diagnosis. Oh, wow. So he lived with CMT, a life of big, bulky leg braces and altered walk, lots of daily pain, many surgeries, even losing toes to infections. He never seemed to let it break his spirit, and he did everything most normal kids and men would do, even though it would have consequences. He also lived a life of pain medication because he had no choice. It started to take his happy spirit near the end, but drugs through his life were a go-to. Okay, 420 was a savior for him. Um, I never felt animosity towards him for being an addict. He didn't present himself or ever really show sign of it, shines signs of it. His tolerance was too great. Those were the cards he was dealt. These days, I realize it wasn't the feel better drugs, but his bright, happy spirit that was his, that was his wonder wall. It saved him. That's beautiful and very interesting. This song has become a big joke to the guitar community. But really, all joking aside, yeah, it's a good song. Truly. All right, let's take a look at the lyrics. And I've got song facts pulled up as well. Hey, for some reason, I uh, haven't really done song facts in a bit, so we're back with that. Okay. <clears throat> Today is going to be the day they're going to throw it back to you. By now, you should have somehow realized what you've got to do. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. All right. That's pretty straightforward. So today is going to be the day they're going to they're going to try to do something. They're going to throw it back to you. Hmm, okay, that's interesting. By now you should have somehow realized what you got to do. It's so vague. That's what makes it interesting. That's what makes it I guess also relatable too is how vague it is. Backbeat, the, wor the word on the s is on the street that the fire in your heart is out. I'm sure you've heard it all before, but you never really had a doubt. I don't believe that anybody feels way the way I do about you now. In all the roads we have to walk are winding, and all the lights that lead us there are blinding. There are many things I would like to say to you, but I don't know how. Because maybe you're going to be the one that saves me. After all, you're my wonder wall. Today was going to be the day, but they'll never throw it back to you. By now, you should have somehow realized what you're not to do. Okay, so he flips that around. Uh, repeat the, the thing and the chorus and the chorus. Wow, that's it. That's the whole song. Wow, okay. See what this main comment is? Uh, Wonderwall was released as the fourth single off of... Fourth single? Wow, that's a lot of singles. Off of Oasis's classic... <laughs> a lot of singles off of oasis's classic album what's the story morning glory it was supposedly written for uh, his noel gal gallagher's gallagher's yeah hopefully then girlfriend meg matthews as he told nme in 1996 it's about my girlfriend band members bonehead bonehead and okay seconded that in the documentary live forever the ups and downs of british pop however after Gallagher divorced Matthews in 2001. He said the song was not about Matthews. The song is about an imaginary friend who's going to come and save you from yourself. Some people believe it's about Noel talking to himself. He is his own imaginary friend out of leaving Oasis or leaving life. Others believe it's about the relationship between Noel and Liam. Liam. Some say it is about his then imaginary friendship with Paul McCartney. The song's title was appropriated from the 1968 film Wonderwall from Psychedelia to Surrealism, which George Harrison provided the soundtrack for. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so he said it's about one thing, then he changed what it's about. Yeah, all right. It's a really good song. Uh, this charted number two in the UK and number eight in the US, and here are the song facts. The general consensus is that the song is about his then-girlfriend, 
who is compared with a schoolboy's wall who is compared with a schoolboy's wall to which posters of footballers and pop stars are attached. He told Select Magazine at the time it's about my girlfriend. She was out of work and that a big down on her luck, so it was just saying, cheer up and F and get on with it. He later married, then divorced her. However, according to Q Magazine's 1001 Best Songs Ever, this is not about Matthews. He's quoted as saying, The meaning of the song was taken away from me by the media who jumped on it. And how do you tell your missus it's not about her when she's read it is? It's about an imaginary friend who's going to come save you from yourself. Okay, that's, that's an interesting perspective to it. Is the, yeah, <laughs> all right. The music is based on Wonderwall music, an instrumental album George Harrison wrote for the movie Wonderwall. This was the first solo album released by any of the Beatles. The concept of the Wonderwall is based on the film called Wonderwall from Psychedelia to Surrealism. She li- uh, Jane Birkin lives next door to a man who becomes fascinated with her, so he slowly makes holes in the wall so he can watch her through it. This is the Wonderwall. Warning, this movie is supposedly terrible. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. This album is the second best-selling in British history. The best-selling album in UK history history is Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band by the Beatles. Okay. It sounds like a cello was played on a Mellotron tape played... Played Mellotron tape playback keyboard. Although the video features show someone playing the cello. Okay. He uses a Fender. It's the only one that he uses a Fender. It's one of the few songs where he uses a Fender guitar rather than a Gibson guitar. The opening track of What's the Story Morning Glory is the track Hello, which starts off with the opening riff of Wonderwall playing extremely quietly. This stops when the guitar noise comes in. The original title was Wishing Stone. He uh, recounted in 2013 that the name came from a girl who he took back to his hotel room. She had the stone in her pocket that she insisted I had. I thought, what a great title, and the song came out of that. That's hilarious. The song was called Wishing Stone for a long time until one day he was listening to George Harrison's Wonderwall music album, and he thought, brilliant, I've got a Beatles connection. In an interview he uh, conducted in Australia and asked which three songs he would like to be remember for, remembered for, he exp- responded with Live Forever, Wonderwall, then proceeded to list several others, including Champagne Supernova, Magic Pie, and Cigarettes and Alcohol. Radiohead recorded a bootleg cover of the song in which Tom York sings many incorrect lyrics and cuts out mid-chorus when a background voice says, Is this abysmal or what? It's always good to make fun of Oasis. That's hilarious. Okay. Um, it's in a bunch of shows and won a bunch of stuff. All right, uh, Ryan Adams recorded the song and he put a darker spin on it. It occurred to me when I was singing it from the pers- that I was singing it from the perspective of someone in danger of committing suicide. That's not what I was thinking about when I first did it, but it did have a different meaning. It's someone saying, "You are my last hope." But in the second verse, that hope is not happening, and I'm singing like that person would sing if it's the last thing they're ever going to sing. Wow. That's interesting. The easy-to-play song has become a fast favorite among novice guitarists who, as legend has it, strum the tune at every coffee shop, music store, and house party from since it dropped in 1995. It was still going strong in 2012 when a number of memes started cropping up on the internet featuring images of musicians with the tagline, Anyway, here's Wonderwall. One of the earliest examples of this is a grinning guy saying, I don't know that one. Here, let me play Wonderwall again. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Noel learned of its ubiquity. Let me look up what that means. Ubiquity. Hmm. Appearing everywhere or being very common. New word. When he got a frosty reception from guitar store employees, he told Guitarist Magazine in 2002 that after Morning Glory came out, he was in Manchester, went to this guitar shop, and there was a sign banning people from playing Wonderwall. When I walked in, they all groaned, effing hell, man. Do you realize how many times we've heard Champagne, Supernova, and Wonderwall over the past six months? 
Uh, that's hilarious. All right. Um, thank you guys for joining me. This video went on a little bit long. I think that one of the reasons the song lyrically works so well is because of how vague everything is. Like, it's... If it's about a girlfriend, if it's about an imaginary friend, you know, it, it's very... It leaves a lot up to the imagination. He never tells you what is the thing you're supposed to do and not to do, you know? But at the same time, it's very, like, there's a sense of, all right, something needs to happen. It's almost like he's letting you build more of what's going on than there actually is. Or fill in the blanks with your own experiences, which I think some of the most um, enduring art does that. Fills in the blanks with your... You're able to fill in the blanks with your own experiences. Or it is so masterful that it... And this is... I'm talking about other types of art, not necessarily this song. So masterful that it encompasses what you know about life or changes what you know about life. Um, but anyway. Today is gonna be the day. Na -na 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 -na. Okay, I need to stop. Uh, now that that's gonna be in my head for the rest of the night, I've got to make at least one more video. So uh, stay tuned for that. Deathstroke 9 out. See you guys soon. And thank you for watching. We are Legion, my friends. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing.